Beneath the bubbling geysers and hot springs of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming lies a volcanic hotspot that has fueled some of the largest eruptions on Earth. Geologists have now fully imaged the underground plumbing system and have discovered not one, but two magma chambers beneath the giant volcano. The major novelty is that we uncovered a deeper, larger magma reservoir in the lower crust, said study author Xin Hua Huan, a seismologist at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Scientists have known about plumes that carry molten rock from deep in the mantle to a region about 60 kilometers 37 miles below the surface. They have also imaged a shallow magma chamber about 10 kilometers 6 miles below the surface, containing about 10,000 cubic kilometers 3,700 cubic miles of molten material. But now they have found an even deeper magma chamber, 4.5 times larger, that lies between 20 and 50 kilometers, 12 and 31 miles, below the surface. They found the missing link between the mantle plume and the shallow magma chamber, said Peter Cervelli, a geophysicist in Anchorage, Alaska, who works at the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. The discovery itself doesn't increase the chances of an eruption, which is driven by the emptying of the shallow chamber. The last major eruption was 640,000 years ago, and the threat of earthquakes is much more likely today. But the deeper chamber means that the shallow chamber can be refilled again and again. Knowing that you have this extra reservoir tells you that you can have much larger volumes erupting on a relatively short time scale," said co-author Victor Tsai, a geophysicist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The discovery, reported online today in Science, also confirms a long-suspected model for some volcanoes in which a deep chamber of melted basalt, a dense rock rich in iron and magnesium, feeds a shallower chamber filled with a lighter, silicon-rich rock called rhyolite. The researchers used seismometers to measure the noise of the earthquakes to create a sort of sonogram of the Earth's crust. When an earthquake passes through molten material, the seismic waves slow down. The team interpreted these low-velocity areas as magma chambers, even though these chambers are still mostly solid rock and contain only a small amount of molten melt. Distant earthquakes are useful for imaging deep structures, such as the mantle, and local earthquakes can help see shallow chambers. Huang said his study is the first time the two types of data have been combined to see the middle depths and the deeper chambers, in a way. His team used 11 seismometers from the EarthScope US array to listen for deep quakes and 69 seismometers from several local seismic networks to collect data from shallower quakes. The study is, a comprehensive view of the magma system from the top of the eruption into the crust, said Alan Levender, a geophysicist at Rice University in Houston, Texas. But he said the study raises an interesting new question that could be the subject of future research.
With the North American tectonic plate moving westward a few centimeters per year over a steady mantle plume, he expected to see the two chambers, which are inside the plate, shift west of the plume. Instead, they shifted east of the plume. This didn't quite match our expectations, he said. 